Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. You like the new look? Shaved, trimmed the mustache, and I'm actually wearing the glasses that I'm supposed to. We're going to be doing another reaction today. This is going to be a little bit different than the traditional content that you've seen so far in Home Free and Voice Play. I'm going to be covering the Bass Gang's arrangement and performance of Hide and Seek, featuring Lauren Paley. We've already heard a uh, Voice Play's version of this, and I was pretty impressed by it. Uh, the bass game covered it, and I've heard it's great, so you'll be getting my first time reaction today. Thank y'all so much for all the likes, comments, and subscriptions over the past few videos. It means a lot to me. And if you want to do me a solid, drop me one of these. Give me a like, drop some comments. really helps the channel out and the algorithm. So with that said, I'm going to shunt you over to the disclaimer that I put before I start every single video, and we're going to move on. Before I get into the disclaimer part, this is a musical analysis and reaction video. What does that mean for you as the audience? That means that there's gonna be a lot of starting and stopping and me hitting the pause button. And the reason being is that I am stopping so that way you can get a better understanding of what's happening musically in these pieces of music. Now, onto the disclaimer. I am not a musical genius in any way, shape, or form. I'm simply sharing my musical insight and knowledge with you so that way we can get a better understanding of the music that we like to listen to every single day. With that said, let's jump in. Let's see what we got. Geez, okay. <laughs> this is cool. So at the beginning here, one of the main differences at the intro of this compared to Voice Play's version is um, is that um, they don't do a, any like layered or background vocals in this part right here. So they have a couple of layered effects as we're fading or we're pulling away from this Western like building in the video, and while uh, Lauren singing in the back phenomenal um, facial expressions by her by the way this has got a nice creepy vibe to it no, you can hear there's nothing in the background here the door. until this next line there's like some sort of like distorted um some sort of distorted effect back there it's kind of nice you can let me try to imitate it. It's already dumb. You can keep me. That's an interesting little thing to make it more uh, creepy. So before we get into this part, which is already, I can tell is going to be awesome, Lauren, or as far as I know, this arrangement is in the same key as the one that voice play did, but this section that they're getting ready to go into seems almost radically different. So I'm excited to see what else they got in store. For you to try and run away, This is cool. This is creative. I dig it. I dig it. So this section right before we drop into, like we have this, the couple of lines she does here and then we drop into the doom, 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 dooms that uh, the bass gang is doing in the back. And this part was pretty radically different from voice plays. Let me see if I can find the spot. I'm pretty sure these dooms are panned in each year too. It's already too late for you to try and run away. I see through the window. Yeah, these uh, dooms that they're doing here are panned. So that's kind of cool. 
their their theatrical set it looks like it looks like she's almost like a puppet master and then these the base gang are her puppets that's a creepy twister i like it i hear a subharmonic somewhere in the background i want to see if i can find out what that is real quick the I think I'm hearing an A flat G sharp one sub. If that's not a sub, let me know. flat C sharp two in the background there. It's nice and rich. Um, so what they're doing in this section here in the background where um, Lauren's obviously on the lead. She's doing her thing as far as the main part of the song, but I want to listen to, I want to draw y'all's attention to the background parts in this and just kind of listen to how intricate it gets. Oh, I'd like to the ooh and then find you um it's, it's like i said too i think they have this in the same key as voice play did but they're doing a lot of um their oohs they have some notes in there that don't belong within the triads of the chord um i don't know my chords that well so it's going to be hard for me to kind of stop and evaluate a bunch of them so i'm gonna not for the sake of time and for that sake because like i said i don't know my chords that well but we'll move on cool little um, theatrical part about this too. Um, I'm trying to adjust myself with the ring light with the glasses. Um, a cool little theatrical part is that I, I guess it's theatrical. They probably added an effect in there to their voices too. But this effect makes it almost sound like the voices in the background are borderline fake. But this is a good thing considering the context of the piece. So this is supposed to be an eerie, creepy vibe. And I feel like they added this effect intentionally to almost make it sound like whoever is singing it is not a person, but rather a creature or an item like a puppet, for instance. I mean, if this was intentional, this was awesome. Nice job, guys. See, it has, it has some interesting effect on there. It, it doesn't sound totally natural, if you hear what I'm talking about. Just take a listen as we continue on. That was cool. Check out the little foot, footstep shuffle here. The bass line in this is pretty pulled back. It's, I mean, it's bouncing, it's bouncing up and down and it's, it's good and smooth, you know, it's not like they're not slamming low notes the entire time. It's kind of nice. It's just, it's a very good balance. Excuse me. So I'm not exactly sure who's doing the notes here. I'd imagine it's, it might be Bobby or possibly Tommy, but I'm really not 100% sure. Um, if you know who's doing the lower part in this, let me know. I'm curious, but it's a very solid bass line, so it creates a good foundation for the rest of them to fill out the sound, so that way Lauren can carry the lead. So it's really cool. I uh, hear a sub here, pretty deep one too. E2, or E1, excuse me. I also found a way to, um, get my piano to go lower. There's a transpose option on here and I did not notice that, notice that so that's kind of cool. So let me transpose, so. So I think I'm hearing a E1 sub, this note here. Let's see, in this little section. It's quiet, but I think I still hear it. Just wait, you can't hide from me. I'm... It, I 
think it goes down from an A flat G sharp one to a F sharp G flat one. Then it goes to an E one. And then it sounds like also that it goes to, it, it finally, like it stops on a C sharp D flat one. That's exactly what happens, guys. That's some really cool. That's some really cool bass content there. So they're doing this right here. That's that's awesome. And these lower notes past the A flat G sharp here. That could have been chest for like Bobby, for instance. But the rest of those notes have to be subharmonics or some form of the extended technique, because to my knowledge, no one in this group has that low of a range. But if I am wrong, correct me in the comments. Just wait, you can't hide from me. I'm Beatboxing in this is pretty cool, by the way. I'm not giving Marlon enough credit. Um, it is very also, it's radically different from the beatboxing in uh, voice plays arrangement. Voice play, they do bounce around a lot with their uh, beatboxing um, styles. They change it up like three or four, maybe even five times or more. So, but it's not to say that this is any like, it's like, it's not to say this is any lesser or better. It's just, it's it's different. And honestly, I think it's nice to have a similar beat throughout multiple sections of, of this song. So it's nice. We'll keep going. Just wait, you can't hide from me. Another E1 sub here. Not sure who did it, but it sounded good. Knock, knock, I am at your door now. I am coming in. No need for me to ask permission. Bobby's carrying a really nice lead here. He's a good, he's a really solid low bass. He's got a, um, he's got a good range. He's got a good tone. He's got good higher partials. He sounds great whenever he sings. So let's listen to him sing this lead part again. You can't hide from me. And I didn't mention this before, but Lauren's doing awesome. She's got a very even tone. It's very balanced. It's very smooth, velvety, buttery. It's It flows really nicely. She's got a really nice high range and it works very well in, um, in this piece because, well, frankly, it's, I mean, it's just about her piece at this point. She's known as the stairwell siren and she's known for singing this song in a set of stairwell or in a in a stairwell with a bunch of sets of steps in it because of all the echo this is arguably her piece because she went viral singing or this is one of the many songs she went viral on it's singing in the stairwell of hers so um i gotta i gotta give her credit she's got a wonderful voice and this this piece of music really it it's it was in my opinion, made for her. Ooh, did you hear Laura, uh, Lauren's lower range here? That's, that was pretty low for her. Or at least the lo lower part of hers that I've heard. I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. Knock, knock, I am at your door now, I am coming in, no need Bobby, you did a really good job with the theatrical part of this because I look at I look at your character in this and I am borderline terrified. Like, that's a really creepy look and it adds to the vibe of the music video. For me to ask permission, knock, knock, I'm inside your room now. And Marwin joins in on this part and... Marwin, up until this point, as far as I know, has been just beatboxing, unless they've been doing some um, multi-tracking, which uh, it's it's very likely that they have done that, but I'm not 100% sure considering. I mean, I know that the Bass Gang is, um, is not a live performing group due to the uh, distance between them, but as far as I know that this is a... Um, this, this very well could be multi-tracked. Peter, um, Bobby... Marwin or Tommy, if um, if this was multi-tracked, I'd be curious to know, or if anyone else knows in the comments, let me know. To ask permission, not, 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 I'm 
inside your room now. With okay, so I this is the first time this is my first time hearing Marwin's voice and initially he seemed more like a high bass to me, but now I'm starting to hear this part where he joins Bobby when he's leading here and I'm starting to think he's a low bass too because he's got he's got some pretty good higher partials in these notes that he's singing along with Bobby here. So whenever I say higher partials, um, for those of you that don't know, a higher partial is, um, it almost sounds like a higher part of a note is being sung. So whenever you hear someone sing a note very powerfully, very, if it sounds rich, that means it's got, it's almost got like a rattle to it in a way. So listen very closely to whenever Barwin joins in here and I'll try to point it out to you the best I can. His tone is very rich here. Bobby's is rich too. And I'll tell you what, I'll back it up a little bit more so that way you can see it. I can draw your attention to it better. Peter's laying some fantastic uh, background vocals in this part along with uh, Tommy, so. Wait, you can't hide from me, I'm coming. Knock, knock. Uh, by the way, earlier, look, it appears that uh, Tommy P did that E1 sub. I am at your door now. So in this little part that Bobby is singing, you can almost hear like it's almost rattling in the back of his voice. That that's a good signal or that's a good sign that you have a singer who is getting close to complete or if not complete vocal flow vocal fold closure, which gives it that almost rattly like sound. And this is how you know that this person has a has a strong range in addition to strong note quality. You, I mean, strong note quality, you hear a lot of higher partials. So listen for that. Don't listen for the subby part of the note like this. Listen for like the top of the note, if you know what I'm talking about. Me, I'm coming. Knock, knock, I am at your door now. So if, if you can hear what I'm talking about, that's, it's real, for me, it's hard to point it out, but higher partials, in a nutshell, is what really indicates that you have a solid sounding note, is that you get, you're getting full vocal flow. I can't talk traditional at this point in my videos. It's a good sign that you have full vocal fold closure. There we go. I am coming in, no need for me to ask permission. Not, not dive inside your room now. Where is it you you hear the higher partials in uh, Marwin's voice here? Try to listen. It's um, it's almost like it's the voice travels really well, it, it, and it almost rattles inside his body. I think that's the best way I can describe it. Not, not dive inside your room now. Where is it you hid? Our game of hide and seek's about to Ooh, okay. It just went dubstepy, folks. This is cool. And does Marwin do the E1 sound? I think about to He sure does. Hello. No, that's an E flat. This is cool. This is a really cool song. Did you win our game of hide and seek? about to There's so much happening here, guys. On uh, a side note, I'm waiting for Peter Barber to take a lead um, part on this because everyone else has except for Tommy. So I'm waiting for Tommy and Peter to do a lead part in this. I'm, I think they might, but I'm, not, I'm just speculating. So let's go back to this E1 sub here. And we'll we'll move along through this section. Where is it you hid? Our game of hide and seek. About to. These bet these uh, about to. Uh, it's that's a really cool uh, musical contrast piece there. You hid. Our game of hide and seek. About to. They and they did it staccato too. So staccato means very. Er, I don't. I can't give you a literal translation of the of the word. But what it essentially means is very short. So legato means uh, long or, and attached. I, I don't, like I said, I don't think that's an exact translation, but it is a 
it's long like when you have legato it's la 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 it means long stretched if you get staccato it's short and to the point and pop 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 and in this spot here they're they're doing some staccato notes and it fits this little part because it also includes some complete silence in between these staccato notes and it's like beethoven said there there's power with silence in music it's very brief silence, but it gives it some more musical contrast. Do you see what I... Uh, 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 uh. Nice. So that is Tommy singing there. That was a cool visual effect right there where their faces were melting off, I guess. That was really cool. Ah, uh, there we go. We got a good, decent glimpse of uh, Peter's uh, voice there. Nice. That evil little laugh in the back by uh, Bobby. That was pretty cool. Nice. I wonder. Ooh, hello. There's a sub in the background. C sharp G f or uh, C sharp D flat two or one. Excuse me. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Operatic technique. So for those that don't know, uh, Peter is is an opera singer as well, and you can kind of see. Um, where Marwin accommodated for that in this arrangement, it looks like. And I, don't, I really don't know anything about opera. I just know what sort of kind of sounds like opera, and then that's about all I can tell you. I mean, it, it sounds it sounds good. It really does. I, uh, I just can't, I can't be like, mm, does it belong, does it, do, does it not belong, does it, you know, I, I can't do that because I don't know much about opera, but it sounds good within the arrangement so and plus it sounds good in peter's voice because he's been doing opera for years so he's, i mean he's got a good good voice for it so key change here peter is that you doing the c sharp one i mean it looks like you're singing when you're doing it so Common sense tells me that it most likely is you, but if this is Peter, nice man. So they went up, it sounds like a whole step. I'll show you this key change and we'll continue. Did they go a whole step or was it half? Half step, sorry. Um, you were hiding here. Something else that's a little bit different um, from this arrangement that Lauren specifically is doing here is that she is actually singing this part. So in a uh, voice plays version, as far as I can tell, she was whispering from this point on. And this is kind of nice to see. I mean, we all love Lauren. We know she's got a wonderful voice. We like to hear her sing, so. These guys, they did a really good theatrical job with this. That was an A from Peter, I think. Nice, full chest too, as far as I know. There's subharmonic city in the background, but we can't, I wish I could stop and listen to it all, but. What was that chord? Hello, that was sweet. So the, it's all kept pretty much the same tempo at some point, but it looks like it's starting, like it starts to slow down kind of out of nowhere. 
and then as it's slowing down like this, it's they they go outside of the context of the key, so they sing a different different chords that don't usually aren't usually sung within this key. This part here, so they, it goes like to like a flat chord of some sort. So it has like a, the, all I know is that this chord has like a, let me listen to it. So it, it, it's like it jumps up, it's like it's almost went up in key, like another half step or another whole step, but then it comes back down and it almost sounds like it either comes back down to the same key and they're just singing a chord that doesn't normally belong within this key. And then it sounds like they, or they go down to the next key that they, or the original key they were singing the song in before they made that switch I was showing you earlier. <sighs> oh man. those subs and she and Lauren sings kind of high here and you get the rest of them filling out the rest of the sound and rounding it off but So Lee Lauren here is actually not singing that high, but it sounds like she's sang a background part that's ridiculously high. I don't think this is the lowest, the highest note she's ever sang, but this is this is crazy. See if you can hear it with me. B. B six. No, I think that's a B7. That sounds like a B7. Hang on, let me untranspose my piano. Perhaps? I want to listen one more time to see if I can find out. I'm almost out of time. Looks like I have one It could be either one or it could be both. It's hard for me to find out, but nice. Guys, this is awesome. Harmonic, I mean, Bass Gang is also known for really nice harmonies and going doing crazy stuff um, arrangement wise, especially like in, like whenever they're constructing their harmonies and chords and such. Yeah, so this is definitely multi-tracked. I can confirm what I said earlier at the beginning. She went high again here too. Holy freaking crap. I want to know how high she went. This is a freaking creepy face by Lauren, by the way. It, this is really nice. Holy crap, I think she's going into the seventh octave here. Holy crap. She went, she almost went. Oh, one more time and then we gotta end it. Did she hit a C7? Hold on. That can't be the note she's singing, right?
Holy crap. She's singing in the seventh octave. Wow. Guys, this is incredible. This is in a league of its own, folks. And I'd love to compare it more to Voice Play's version, but this, you can't. You can't. It's, it's like comparing apples and oranges. Golly, man. These are really cool. Marwin, Tommy, Peter, Bobby, Lauren. This is fantastic. You've got your, you've got an arrangement of your own. Marwin, it was awesome. Harmonic soup, ear candy, hello. All these chords with the notes that don't normally belong within the triad of the chord and shifting to chords that don't even necessarily belong within the key. Nice, man. This is sweet. So I'm about out of time for this one, but I appreciate y'all tuning in to watch. This was crazy. Um, Bass Gang, if any of you are watching this video, I'd appreciate your thoughts in the comments. Correct me if I'm wrong on anything. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys. I love you. Drop a like, comment, and if you will, drop a subscription to me if you have been watching my content and you haven't subscribed already. We'd love to have you here at the Vocast family. We've got some exciting things coming. So we love you. Take care of yourself. We'll see you next time.